All right, moving on to our final lesson, lesson number 10. This lesson covers IFR operations, and it covers IFR terminal and en route flight, including IFR charts. We'll cover navigation aids, find intersections, and identify various altitudes. Hi, this is Josh Prusik for ASA. As a commercial pilot, you'll be called into service for all sorts of different flying activities. Many of these flights may require flight under IMC in order to safely complete them. Now, it's possible to receive your commercial certificate without holding an instrument rating, but there will be limitations placed upon your commercial flying, which we'll discuss in this lesson. For this reason, most pilots earn their instrument rating before earning their commercial pilot certificate. In this lesson, we'll review some of the basic instrument procedures and cover the instrument-related questions the FAA can ask you on your written examination. With that said, let's get started. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, the commercial certificate can be obtained without holding an instrument rating. However, if you choose to go this route, there are some limitations that will be imposed on your commercial flying. First of all, if you do not have an instrument rating, all your passenger carrying flights will be limited to a distance less than 50 nautical miles from your point of departure. And of course, it would go without saying then that these flights would all have to be made under VFR. You'll also be prohibited from carrying any passengers for hire at night without that instrument rating. So you can see now that it would be pretty tough to make a living as a commercial pilot if you don't have that instrument rating in your pocket. Now let's go ahead and review some basic instrument terms and procedures. As you already know, an instrument approach is really nothing more than a specified plan for transitioning an aircraft from the en route airway structure on down to the airport. Let's start out our review of instrument approaches by first defining some terms that apply to the instrument approaches. Now, we'll take a look at an instrument approach chart like this one right here. This happens to be the ILS Runway 9 at Riverside Municipal Airport in Riverside, California. Now, the title of the chart will always be shown right here up at the top where it's very easy to see. This is also the area that shows what minimum equipment must be on board the aircraft in order to fly the approach. Now, in this case, at least one localizer receiver, one glide slope receiver, and one marker, beaker, marker beacon receiver must be installed in the aircraft, and you'll note that these are all just the components of an ILS approach. Now, a localizer DME approach, for instance, such as the localizer DME runway 31 right at Des Moines, would require at least one localizer receiver and one DME receiver. If we didn't have that equipment, well, then we'd have to choose a different approach. Now, when flying an instrument approach, if the final approach course is aligned within 30 degrees of the runway centerline, then the approach will be considered a straight-in approach. Now, this simply means that a landing can be made straight in from the final approach segment. If the runway is not aligned within 30 degrees of the final approach segment, then the approach will be designated with a letter, such as the VOR DME Alpha approach. This simply lets the pilot know that only circling minimums have been published for this particular approach. Now, when flying an instrument approach, it's also critical that you always double check to make sure that you have the correct chart out for the approach that you're flying. First of all, the location of the chart is always shown right up here at the top of the instrument approach chart. Many larger airports have more than a few approaches, and some even have multiple approaches of the same variety, such as two different ILS approaches. Always critical to check that information out before you start the approach. 